So everybody, we're here for the announcement of Al Jefe Entertainment, and we have Jesse James, and I'd also like to introduce Hildy Kativa. And uh, Hildy will talk a little bit about Al Jefe Entertainment, and uh, we'll go from there. Good morning, thank you for joining us. Uh, you should have all received these black flash drives. Our media kits are on here. Just make sure you get to Okay, before you leave, make sure you have <laughs> um, Basically, if there's a promo on there from Jesse, and there's a trailer for all five videos that give you a good recap of what's on all the videos. Uh, earlier this year, Jesse's production company, Pay Up Cyber Productions, teamed up with Circle King Networks to create LFA Entertainment. And that company has produced five videos so far, and the series is called Jesse James Presents. Um, three of the videos are how-tos, and two of them document Jesse's love and passion for off-road racing. Basically, these videos are a direct response to um, what Jesse's fans have been asking for for many years now. But I'll let him tell you all about that. So, um, so with great pleasure, I introduce Mr. Jesse James. Thank you. Uh, so I think that, um, I mean, everybody's asking, I mean, since Monster Garage and like kind of opened the door for metalwork and fabrication, after that, you know, started any way that people can get, try to contact me, like email through the shops, Facebook, MySpace, you know, Twitter. It's like a, a steady stream of people wanting to like, apprentice with me or get me to teach them skills and I thought that rather than trying to open some school or, or something like that that is just make DVDs and show basic skills and how to do you know some start off with projects that may be not so complicated that it's more achievable for guys in the garage with basic hand tools to do and uh, so we just started filming stuff and uh, rather than me being like you know Bob Ross, like trying to show people how to paint a picture or something like that. You know, I, I kind of take two of the kids, you know, from the speed shop in Austin and uh, teach them on camera how to do stuff. And it's, it's, it's actually really fun and I really dig doing it. And I think that translates to the DVDs. And it, uh, you know, it's actually a lot of information in each one. You know, we're not limited by like, you know, I've done so much television where I'm limited, you know, to shows that have to be 43 minutes. So a lot of the, you know, that's the thing that sucked about Monster Garage, I think, is like people are like, shit, man, we want to see Jesse make stuff for it. But, you know, it's got to be entertaining in TV. So, like, maybe having me take well some really complicated part isn't as entertaining as, like, having two guys, you know, motherfuck each other or whatever. So, you know. <laughs> And, but, you know, DVD is a chance where it's like unlimited length and I can teach people whatever I want. And it's, you know, so far so good. It's been really well received. Um, I think the important thing is like, obviously I have probably the most amazing shop ever with equipment and anything I could ever want, but I'm trying to steer away from using like super, super expensive, rare machines and use basic hand skills and hand tools and so people can, you know, so they don't say, well, shit, I could make that if I have that tool too. You know, they don't say that. You know, they can see, you know, make stuff that more likely they have in their shop. And I think the projects that I'm picking is uh, stuff that, like, it's not like making an all riveted bomber seat out of aluminum, which is like, you know, World War II riveting and fitting technology, which, you know, yeah, you could follow right along and make that seat, but it's also that technology you could use to make, you know, a hundred other different things, you know, like making a set of stainless headers for a, a car, you know, that's like that tubing technology and fitting and welding tubing could apply to like roll cages and, uh, you know, lots of other stuff. So trying to keep a, a pretty broad spectrum of what we're doing, you know, and I think we're going to, as we evolve and make more of these, I think we're going to take a lot of shop and fabricator input on seeing what they want to see me make, you know, and like, you know, I think it, it's, I think it's cool. So, if you guys have any questions? Jesse, are you still in Long Beach? No, I moved, I shut the shop down in Long Beach and like, 
uh, moved everything to Austin, Texas. My shop, and I have a, a shop in Texas called Austin Speed Shop, and then I moved my personal shop from Long Beach, where all my equipment was. That's now in my house in Austin. I have a, I have a 3,000 square foot shop on my property, so like finally got successful enough that I could go back to my garage. So, <laughs> which to me is like it's like heaven. I love it so much. So. Well, I have one guy that's helping me, but he quit two days ago. <laughs> no, he's we were involved in it. He'll come back. <laughs> he like we're involved in a really heavy duty project that's got a pretty heavy time schedule on it, and he just like you know. <laughs> it's sometimes I think like that whole monster garage thing follows me around, you know, because like we're all buddies and we're friends, but you know, when shit's gotta get done, I can be the biggest dick in the world. <laughs> Especially when you start to mess stuff up, you know, the friendship goes out the window. I'm like, hey, you know, it's my way or the highway. And he, he chose the highway. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully it's a cul-de-sac. <laughs> <We'll> come back. <laughs> I like to show about everything. Well, shit, I have, so, I'm probably the only person that says so many cars, me personally, that I have my own flatbed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we use, I use, you know, I have a, a, a Freightliner flatbed, like a roll off, and then we have two F 250 chase trucks that are all King Kong suspension, you know, with six inch lifts with full service beds. So for the trophy truck, like anything, and those leapfrog down the peninsula for Baja. And so, and they're fully outfitted with everything from spare transmissions to spare shocks, everything but a spare engine because, you know, score rules won't let you swap a motor. So, you know, but pretty much everything that I'll need, you know, is there, right there in those trucks and like, you know, I'm a Chevy guy, my race cars have Chevy engines, but man, for chasing and something you want to beat the shit out of, Ford's just take it more than anything else. <laughs> Can't kill them. Yes? What car would you like to work on that you haven't worked on yet? Uh, probably my 38 Lincoln Zephyr, or my 69 Cadillac Eldorado, one of those two. I have like projects lined up till death. <laughs> so, you know, um, I don't know, like, uh, as far as like just working on it or whatever, I don't know. I just like to work, so like, I could be working on, you know, you know, 240C, making a headlight bezel, and she'd be just as happy as if I was working on like a Delahaye making a fender. So like, it just, I just. I enjoy the work aspect of it, not so, and the pride in that, not so much like the prestige of working on, you know, the actual project. So, and I'm like, kind of, like a weirdo. Like, I won't sleep all night thinking about some little chicken shit bracket that I want to make. So, like, it doesn't really. I don't really think about the glory of like the end. I think about like, yeah, how do I connect this? You know, and like it'll all of a sudden come to me, and then I'll like run to the shop in the morning and make it. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I want to do, so. As a fellow Austinite, I wonder how the shift is between California and Austin. Uh, it's, well, my, my house is 16 miles from downtown, and it's like, for the last uh, 17 years, I've been in downtown Long Beach, and uh, because of the success of Monster, you know, I used to have, that loft at the West Coast Choppers, and I used to sit there and I could look out over the whole street and see Anaheim and the windows and the sky, and the shop got so busy and so many people standing at the gate and trying to get in the shop that I was forced out of there and I moved across the street for the last 12 years to a shop with no windows, and outside my door was a brick wall, so literally got to stare at a brick wall, and it's just like, I never ever reconnected with my tools there. I never could, I did some projects, but I could never fully get into the groove there. And I did, that shop was like state of the art, you know, internet and TVs and cable and flat screens and like 
power hammers and every possible thing I could make it so I could work there, and it just never happened until I realized, you know, a year ago, it's like, wow, I had to change my circumstances and get back to a place where I can reconnect with my tools. Um, and it's just, you know, that place, something about it. You know, now I look out and I see a waterfall and a creek and trees and like, it may sound kind of lame, but like, you know, like a bird flew in my shop the other day and was like just sitting there and I'm like, wow, there's something living here. The only kind of birds I saw in Long Beach were helicopters. <laughs> so. How'd you pick the uh, students for your DVD? Um, the students for the DVD are just kids from the speed shop. We have 10 really, really cool kids in their 20s. One of them's 18, but, and they're really, really enthusiastic about learning metal work and stuff like that. And they're actually employees that work at the speed shop. But uh, I usually kind of, I manage the speed shop because I'm the owner, but I go in and manage and kind of supervise projects. And then on every Saturday at my house, we all kind of convene and I teach them new skills every Saturday you know, kind of tutor them, and I've been doing that for the last couple of years, and then full time since I moved to Austin, and then it kind of like was a given to do the DVDs, well hey, we'll pick a skill that they don't know yet, and we'll just teach them on camera how to do it, and it, it kind of, you know, translates better, I think teaching them, because it's trial and error some of it, you know, I think if it's like, you know, Norm Abrams on on New Yankee Workshop, where like every goddamn thing he makes is like amazing, and no, they never, you never show them throwing anything away, like oh shit, you know, and that never happens. Well, I think this kind of, we do that a little bit and keep it real, where it, it, like, I think that clicks with people more than if you're trying to learn how to make something that you, it's good to see someone else screw up because then you'll, you know, kind of tattoos it on your brain, like okay, I don't want to do that. You know, or, or and then lets them know that like, hey, you know, it's like, it may be frustrating at times, but if you just keep forging ahead with trying to make stuff, you'll eventually get it. You know, a lot of this stuff is just practice. So, like in your DVDs, do you, uh, when, you work, when the kids are working with aluminum, do you like slap their hands if there's a uh, good work and you're trying to like blend carbon fiber and aluminum together with like, the clothing factor? Um, I don't think we don't do too much carbon fiber work at this at the speed shop, but you know, there's there's a couple times when they've screwed up pretty good, and I expose them for what they did. <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. If you ever watch Monster Garage, or someone, it's always the big talker that like screws up the most, or sometimes it's me. So you know, it's kind of, it's it's like fun. And, you know, I think with trying to cross the line where it's like some there's this guy, I probably I think he's died died now, but John Glover. Who, was like the first guy that ever taught uh, English wheel videos. And this is back when I worked for Hot Rods by Boyd. And like the Swedish guy says, oh man, if you can't sleep at night, put this DVD in, and, or as a video cassette then, he's like, put this in and you'll go right to sleep. <laughs> and the guy's like so monotone. And so he had a lot of good information, but it was so painful to watch that you, it took like six tries to watch a 30 minute tape. You know, and I didn't want it like that. I wanted to keep it like entertaining where you know, I think some people, to teach them stuff, you have to, like, trick them, <laughs> you know? If it seems like school or college or some kind of, like, instructional thing, they're not going to want to watch it. But if it's entertaining and you can kind of, like, mix it with cars and chicks and smoke and fire and sparks, then they're going to want to watch it, you know? Um, well, I'm back to building bikes. I took enough time off and kind of like uh, got my shop dialed in and like kind of reconnected with my work and creativity. I mean, obviously, I went through a lot of bullshit in the last two years, and it's kind of made me realize like, you know, the stuff I need in my life and the stuff I don't need. And right now, the only thing I need is my kids and my work. And I'm like, today's my first day off in six weeks straight. And I couldn't be happier. Like my hands are all cut and bleeding, and like <laughs> my eyes are a little glazy from welding so much. And this is like where I belong. So it feels good to like, you know, because I think it was like after Monster Garage ended in 2005, you know, and going, you know, building a hundred cars in five years, 
was like kind of like, oh shit, you know, what am I supposed to be doing now? And then, you know, we get caught up in personal life and all that stuff, and I just realized like, hey, I need to get back to work. You know, and, and I could, I think it's like, I could be happier. You know, but I think with, you know, signing a new deal with Discovery and doing a new series for them, you know, they want the next new Monster Garage. And so, you know, we're working really hard to not like pigeonhole it into like one heavily formatted show. I want bikes, cars, racing, everything on it. But also like, it's got to be a challenge for me. You know, if I can look at something like, oh, I could do that. You know, it's like the wood chipper on the on PT Cruiser on Monster Garage, you know. The network, I told them, don't fucking make me build this because it's too easy and I can do it. And I went in and cut a hole in the roof in the PT Cruiser and built a wood chipper inside of it in 24 hours. It pissed the whole network off because, like, well, we have to make an hour TV show and you did it in one day. You know, it's like, don't, not challenge me. If something seems impossible and I can push myself, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, that's, that makes it fun. But yes, bikes and cars, so. Do you ever feel like you uh, finish a car? Do I, do I feel like I finish it? You mean like the, like, bolt at the after and stuff? Like bolting it together, or? Well, like when you, you uh, conceptualize and everything, you uh, say, okay, it's not, I can't do it anymore, though. Um, I think it's important as like from a fabricator builder, whether it's bikes or cars, to know when to say is enough. You know, when to stop. You know, I think people, you know, kind of run into problems or, or build stuff that's kind of funky when they try to squeeze every single idea they've ever had into a car. You know, those guys at Orange County Choppers are a perfect example of that, you know. Yeah, they have some talented guys, but shit, man, when you're like, gluing more and more stuff on it when you should have just said enough. I mean, I kind of like my stuff, especially the bikes, I like them to look like they won't run. You know, when you, you look at it, it looks like, shit, there's not enough stuff on that thing to make it go. That's when it's enough, you know? If you, covers and bullshit, you know, the way I ride like an idiot, man. If, if, all that stuff will fall off if, in 100 miles if I ride it the way I ride it. You know, I like it to be super, super minimalistic and, and super pure, you know? And I think there's a lot of cars that are super nice, but it's it's like a little bit too much fluff, you know, a little bit too much stuff that like, you know, if you dump a Coke on it, it's like the end of the world, you know? And I think that's why, I think it's one of the things I learned from Boyd Coddington with working at the Hot Rod Shop for a few years is like, you know, less is more, minimal. Work with what you have and make it super, super clean for what it is, you know, and that's what I like. You mentioned connecting, connecting with your tools and connecting with the shop. How do all these variables, like where you're located, what's going on with the public eye affect, what's going on performance-wise, business-wise, and on you know, racing? And um, well, I think from, hey, I'm back in SEMA. I haven't been here since 2002, I think, or 2001. And I started coming here in 93, 94 with Boyd. And like, I think a big part of me, you know, I, I, my head got big. I thought I was all Hollywood and like, you know, I'm married to some famous actress and I don't need to be around all these people that made me who I am. You know, and I think, uh, uh, you know, humbling two years and going through all the stuff I went through, I realized, like, you know, hey, you know, welding and making shit is what's me, not like trying to walk down some fucking red carpet and be important. You know, I, I need to stick with the people that that support me and accept me for like what these do. You know, and that's what I think I've reconnected with. Welcome back to SEMA, baby. Boy, yeah. <laughs> <Lloyd> smiling at <laughs> I don't know if he's smiling at me. He's probably making fun of me. Anybody <laughs> else have any questions? I think I wore a suit here one time. <laughs> like me and me and little John Butera, Boyd, like, oh, we're, we're, we got the best booth at SEMA. You guys need to wear suits. And I think I went to like Goodwill and bought a suit for thirty bucks. <laughs> it was like a terrible, like high water. And he's like, go up to your room and change. You're not wearing that. <laughs> Are you shopping for anything while you're here? I don't know. Isn't this like the the main place?
they still like get free stuff. <laughs> That's what I heard. We used to have like competitions, like who could get the best free thing from SEMA. No, I need uh, I need some suspension for my CUDA, and I don't know. SEMA's like the kingdom of finding stuff you didn't know you needed. <laughs> I was telling something like uh, when I first came here in '93 with Boyd Wheels, like I remember Lombardo or someone like Lombardo shop. They, they, no one went outside, you know. And I remember it was like starting to get full in like '94, and they put like a couple of his cars outside, and he was like livid, like what the fuck, you know? You guys are pushing my shit outside, and like now I guess that's kind of where everyone wants to be. So cool. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody that did not get the EPKs or the, the actual files themselves, if you could just come up here and we'll hand those out to you. Thank you so much for coming.